How you feeling? You got John Riggs here checking out the games from Vic Tokai today for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Vic Tokai, one of those companies that started out as something completely different. It was like a gas company or something like that, and then later on became an informational company. The name Vic is Valuable Information and Communication. So Vic Tokai, interesting. Well, they had nine Nintendo games. We're going to check them all out in this video. I'm going to rank them along the way as well. And if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. I do at least two videos a week. I'm a huge old school gamer. I like the new stuff too. I like the new stuff too, but uh, retro is where my heart's at. Starting off with All Pro Basketball, another basketball game that slips under the radar most of the time because most people are playing uh, this games like Arch Rivals or Double Dribble or something like that, and this one's okay. This game, unlike other basketball games, plays vertically, and I like how when you cross the half-court line, uh, it all swoops around. So instead of like you trying to see where the basket is, like heading south, uh, when you cross your line, then everything flips upside down so you can get a clear shot of your basket and, um, you know, it's a decent game for as far as basketball games go. Now, unfortunately, and somewhat ironically, being six foot five, I'm not the biggest fan of basketball. Um, I didn't mind playing it in recess back in the day. Um, terrible depth perception with my glasses and all that, and... I mean, and then playing basketball video games, eh, it's a little rough on me. I'm giving this one, it's, it's not bad, I'm still gonna give it a D, only because that's what I would give it. Bump and Jump, old school arcade game. I remember playing this way back in the day in the arcade. It's neat because it's a car driving game, but it's not quite a racing game. And the fact that it has that jump mechanic, that makes it all the better. Well, it's called Bump and Jump for a reason. You can bump the other cars into the wall, make it explode, and then there are these spots where you have to build up enough speed so you can jump, and uh, you can either jump over cars or, uh, you know, it's, it's usually used to jump um, across, you know, cliffs and a jump across lakes and rivers and stuff like that. So, old school favorite of mine, uh, dear place in my heart for this game, I'm giving Bump and Jump a... I'll give it a C. I mean, it's good. It's just like, after you play it for a little bit, it's just kind of the same thing. It just gets the same. <laughs> Clash at Demon Head um, is awesome, and it's a game I've never beaten to this day, but I love the idea behind it. I like this style of game. It was kind of Metroidvania before Metroidvania was a thing, because you get to choose which path you want to go to. You go along, and you could, uh, you know, after you finish the area you're in, you can choose which route and choose which path, and it's one of those games back in the day you'd have to want to make a map to tell you where things are, because some people will say like, oh, this person's over here, this person's over there. Well, on your map, it doesn't really tell you what the numbers are um, or even how to get there uh, for the most part. So um, great game, you can get your power-ups. The downfall of this game, which was like, what, really? Is you have to pay for items in the item shop that let you continue your game, like like, like your password <laughs> type stuff. I'm like, that's so weird, okay, whatever. This game is not everyone's cup of tea, but man, I love it. It just has that look to it, um, that, that kind of anime look that um, I was looking for in video games back in these days. So many Nintendo games wanted to be like realistic, and I was like, I don't need realistic, I just need fun. And Clash of Demon Head, I think it's super fun. I'm giving this one an A. Conflict is your strategy game. It's your military strategy. Um, I always base all military strategy type games on military badness for the TurboGrafx-16 because that's a type of game like that that I actually kind of like. And pretty much every other kind of game like this, I don't really care for. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just that's just me being either like I you know like I don't want to go then have them go then me go then they go I know there's a fun to it I, there's a strategy to it and people really like this style of game um, never never been for me and this one I've tried getting into it I've tried playing it um, you know I I get where it could be fun for this style of thing especially a two player now if you're playing this on a two player it's probably a lot more fun um, but again it's not for me I'm giving it an F personally just because it's not for me. There are two GoGo13 games for the NES, and uh, Top Secret Mission, um, again, holds a very dear place in my heart. You play it today for the first time, and you're like, the game is its clunky, the graphics are terrible, it looks like an Atari game sometimes, uh, but there's so much going on for this game that I absolutely love. And this game was my introduction to GoGo13. Later on, I found out there is, you know, the anime, the manga, it's been a series going on for a long, long time. This guy is, is right up there with the... Uh, the top uh, BAs of the world. <laughs> this guy is great. 
A lot of different gameplay options too. Um, not only can you do uh, side-scrolling stuff and you're looking for people to talk to, uh, but there's also a mode that goes into like a first-person shooting kind of thing. Um, there's uh, going through the hallways and stuff like that. There's going underwater and stuff like that. This game has a lot. Um, again, there's a charm to it that I absolutely love. Still like it today. Um, I'm giving this game a B. And then later on, the Mayfat Conspiracy came out. And this one is plays a lot like the first one, in a way, um, but it just looks better. It feels better, it looks better, you know, it just, it has that, it's that same go-go vibe. I love it when you're walking around, you have your hands in your pocket. I think that's super cool. I love that. <laughs> I think it's great. And it's still a fun game, and it's, uh, I've, I've never actually beaten this game, now that I think about it. I gotta, gotta work on that. I like this game quite a bit, too, um, for what it is, and I'm giving this one also a B. Kid Cool is your this type of platformer, and there's one for about every system, it seemed like, during this time. Sega Master System, you had Psycho Fox. For the Sega Genesis, you had Decap Attack, and I absolutely loved Decap Attack. For the NES, you had Kid Cool, and it plays kind of the same way. You run way too fast, you'll end up dying more because you just didn't see the enemy in time. Um, and your weapon is, you can jump on their heads too, but you can pick up an item that you can throw and then you can uh, collect or it'll come back to you and stuff like that. Um, and it's one of those games too, I thought it was kind of fun because if you run fast enough and then stop at the water, you'll actually kind of skip across the water. I love that. <laughs> what a fun game. Kid Cool, interesting platformer, I'm giving it a C. Korean Conquest, I've talked about before a few times in the past. Um, if you're unfamiliar, this game is a little bit more uncommon. It's not this mo the most common Nintendo game of all time. But if you love Mega Man, this game is a straight up Mega Man ripoff. Calling this game a ripoff of Mega Man would be polite, right? <laughs> this game. <laughs> this game. And I think it's great. It's it's as if somebody took the core of Mega Man and reskinned it and added a few little elements and uh, and called it the Creon Conquest. He plays this little witch. Uh, the good news is you start off with all of your abilities right up front. So if you need to turn something into a ball or freeze something or use your fire ability or something like that, you already have access to all of that. And it's Mega Man. And it's great. And it's actually a really fun game too. I'm giving this one an A. <laughs> Terra Cresta, another one of those shooters for the NES that's not as popular. There's so many great shooters for the NES with your 1942, 1943. Um, I, you know, I'd even throw uh, Captain Skyhawk in there as well. There's a lot of great shooters on the NES, and this one just kind of flies under the radar, no pun intended. And it's okay. I mean, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's, it's worth checking out, especially if you're into shooters. This one's worth checking out just because it's, it has a familiarity that you can just jump right into it and start playing it, and then maybe a couple of other features um, that make it unique. And it's, it's all right, and I'm giving this one a C. Now, am I way off the mark on any of these? Make sure you let me know in the comments. I always have new videos like this coming out too, so make sure you're subscribed. If you haven't done so yet, I've done this style of video for so many other great companies for the NES, so make sure you check out these videos as well, and I'll see you very soon.